Greetings, this is Professor BRB, and in the second video in this playlist, we are going to cover artboard number two of the template, which you can download from the link below the video. And uh, we're going to learn to draw a balloon. If you want to navigate to artboard number two, you can go to the artboard panel here and just double click on balloons. You can also do it down here in the status bar where you can navigate between the artboards. Um, just to preview what we're going to be covering, um, we'll be learning to option drag to copy objects. We're going to be using a bounding box and the align panel and the fabulous shape builder tool, one of my very favorite tools. We'll be reviewing fill and stroke in the swatches panel and libraries and using gradients. So we've got a lot to cover here. Um, if you're brand new to Illustrator uh, and you didn't go through the first video in this series, you might want to do that because I'm going to be drawing on some of those skills. Um, first, we are going to select our ellipse tool, which lives under the rectangle tool in your tools panel. Um, I should mention that um, you should switch from uh, if you are in the Essentials workspace, you should switch to Essentials Classic because that's what I'm working in. So when you select your Ellipse tool, uh, which has a keyboard command of L, so you can also just hit the L key. And if you start with the magenta crosshairs and pull down to make a perfect circle, if you hold the Shift key down, it will constrain it to a perfect circle. And uh, you're probably on um, default stroke and fill, which means you'll get a white fill and a black stroke. You can see that down here in your tools panel. You can also see it up here, white fill, black stroke, when that is selected. I'm going to turn on the non-printing grid here, just so we can kind of see that we drew a white uh, shape there. And next we're going to go to our selection tool, which we can just hit V the black arrow up there and grab this and hold down your option key if you're on a Mac or your alt key if you're on a PC and hold down your alt key or option key and your shift key. The option key will make this copy, will make a duplicate of your circle and the shift key will constrain your dragging to straight so that it doesn't go up or down. And um, here I'm going to switch my fill to none. Right now it's white, and I can look over in the fill box here and see it's white. I'm going to switch it to none so that I can see my template. And you'll see that we have here a red bounding box. Um, if you're working on your own file, your bounding box might be a different color. Don't worry about that. The reason that it's red is that the layers, uh, the layer, Preferences for this layer are set, or the layer options are set to red, uh, and it really won't affect your final artwork. It's just to help you keep your layers straight. Um, since I've just opened the layers panel, let me mention that you're going to work on the My Work layer and that all the instructions are on the template layer, which you can turn on and off, which is locked. So make sure you're on the My Work layer. And this bounding box. Uh, allows you in the selection tool to simply grab one of these corners or grab the side here and pull it in. Well, that's not exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to scale from the center. So I hold down my option, hold down my option key or my alt key if I'm on a PC, and notice it scales from the center and gives me an ellipse there. Now, of course, I could have just drawn the ellipse. I'm aware of that, um, like this, with the ellipse tool. But I wanted to show you how to use the bounding box to scale things. So to um, review the option drag, because this is a very common technique we use in Illustrator, normally when you drag something, it just moves it. But if you want to copy, if you hold down your option or your alt key, and you release the mouse button before you release the Alt key, it creates a copy. And uh, we use this absolutely all of the time when we're working in Illustrator. 
Um, next we're going to go to the polygon tool and as we did in the previous video we are going to draw a triangle by while our mouse button is being held down hitting the down arrow key until we end up with triangle. Now if it's not where you want it to be you can hold down your space bar with your mouse button still held down, that's important, and you can move it to wherever you want. If you want to level it, shift key. So there we go. I'm just going to use the bounding box to perfect that a little bit. And uh, now I have two shapes and I want to bring them together um, and so that I can merge them and make them into my balloon. So the way that I do that is I have to select both shapes. Now I want you to take a look up here into my control panel and notice how it's looking right now. And notice how it changes when I select two shapes. So I'm going to select this first one with my selection tool, the ellipse, hold down my shift key, and select the second shape, the triangle. And you'll notice the bounding box now encompasses both of them. And look what popped up in my control panel. I got the align tools. Now you can also access these if they aren't showing up in your control panel by just going under the window menu and choosing align. And that brings you the same tools in the align panel. But I think most of you are going to be able to access them up here. Uh, this little um, widget here allows us to control how the align tool is going to work and the default is aligned to selection which is what we want so you can probably just leave that the way it is um, and then um, what Illustrator has done is it's seen that we have two different objects selected and it's asking us do you want me to align these and the answer is yes so I can align them uh, to left, to center, to right, to top and so forth. But I want to horizontal align them center. That's this one right here. So I just click once and bingo! They are aligned to center perfectly. And I love this feature because it, uh, it allows me to do it precisely without having to do any calculations. Now once you've done this, over here, let me get these going here. Um, I'm just going to move it onto a blank area here. I want to merge them so that they look like this down here. And for that we use the Fabulous Shape Builder tool, which we've had for a few years. Um, you can also select that going uh, Shift M is the keyboard command for, this, for the uh, Shape Builder tool. And uh, it's a very, very simple to merge these two shapes using the Shape Builder. You just mouse over and you see it kind of gets that little grid. Hold down your mouse button and drag across and bingo, your shapes are merged. Now let me show you a little bit about how Shape Builder works because it's really a great tool and uh, it's useful for all sorts of things. Say I had two circles here and I wanted to make a moon shape. I'm going to option drag to make a copy. So I have two circles here. You have to select the shapes you want to use the um, Shape Builder on. That's very important. And I choose my Shape Builder. And if I hold down my Option or my Alt key, you might notice that a little minus. Instead of a plus, the Shape Builder tool gets a little minus. And when I hold down the Alt key and drag, it deletes. Command Z to undo. And if I don't hold my Alt key down, it merges. So this is a super useful tool and you will find yourself going to it frequently. Um, I learned Illustrator in a day before the, the uh, Shape Builder tool and I can tell you this has saved us many many hours of tedious work. So um, we have our balloon now and what we're going to do is fill it with a gradient swatch. So if you go over uh, to your right here and you look for this little grid, that's the swatches panel. You can pull out the swatches panel. You can also find it under window. You can always find your panels here if you don't know where they are. 
Uh, and here I have put into the file a few gradients. And um, you want to make sure your fill box is on top here. There's a few places you can do this. Uh, up here in the control panel. Right now it shows... Oh, I've got to select my shape first. Oh, I forgot what I was doing there. Okay, there we go. Up in the control panel, make sure your shape is selected. Um, you can access your swatches panel. You can access it over here and you can access it down here. So there's three different ways to get to it. Uh, so here are your radial gradients down here. Pick any one that you like. I think I'll pick hot pink today. And your balloon will fill with a gradient. Now I'm not completely happy with how that looks because I don't like where the highlight is. Fortunately, it's very easy to change that. Over here in my tool panel, I'm going to choose the gradient tool, and the keyboard command for that is G. And this pops up the gradient tool. I'm going to zoom in on this because it's kind of interesting to see how exactly that works. So make sure I have my shape selected. Choose the gradient tool again. And if I want to just move where the highlight is, I can just grab this bar and I can just drag it around. That's easy to do. But you can do a lot more things with the gradient uh, tool as well. For example, uh, if I select this little black, it won't really make a change here because this is a radial gradient, but I can rotate the gradient. If I click on one of the stops, I actually can get the swatches panel. And notice the gradients don't show. I can only use a solid swatch for this. And I can change the color. And if I wanted to change the color of the white, I could click on that stop and I can control how the colors are mixed by moving this little uh, square back and forth. So that's a pretty cool feature. Um, I want to get rid of this black stroke, which I don't think is very attractive. So I can do that either down here by putting the stroke on top, or I can do it up here. And I'm just going to go to none, because I didn't think that black was very attractive. So once I've got my first balloon here, uh, I want to draw the string. And for that, we are going to use the pencil tool. First, we want to stroke, set the stroke and fill for the pencil tool. So um, with my selection tool, I'm going to just click on a blank area to make sure I don't have anything selected. And I want to set my fill to none. And I think I'll make my stroke. Right here, I can set my stroke weight up here in the control panel. I'm going to set it to two points. And I want the color of my stroke to be a kind of nice string brown. You can pick any one of these that, uh, that you like. So we have no fill and a brown string. Now we're going to select our pencil tool, which lives underneath the shaper tool has a keyboard command of N. And we can just kind of freehand our string here. If it comes out a little bit, um, how do I say it, uh, not as smooth as you want, there is a smoother tool underneath the pencil tool that you can kind of scribble over it and smooth it out a little bit. Um, it kind of just depends on what you want. Uh, once you have your string, um, we want to group them. And what that does is it just means that if I select my balloon and move it, I don't lose my string. So if I select the both of them with my selection tool, and I go to Object, I can just choose the Command Group or Command G. And all that does is that it means that one click gets them so that I can't lose my string when I move my balloon, or vice versa. So that actually um, pretty much takes care of it. Um, 
to make the additional balloons, if you want to make more, is very easy. You just select your balloon with selection tool, hold down your option key, and drag. And if you want to recolor, so you would have different colors of balloons, you can choose your direct selection tool, click off, and then click just on the balloon shape and it won't select the string. Uh, and you can go to your swatches panel and choose whatever swatch you want. Oops, oops, look, I made a mistake there. Uh, I left my um, stroke on top, so it changed the stroke. Probably good for you to see me make these mistakes. I have to make sure my fill box is on top. And uh, then I can choose a different fill color. So you can uh, kind of practice this. I think play is a very important, oops, I think play, I've got to make sure that I click off to deselect and then reselect. I think play is a very important uh, part of learning and you need to just spend time fooling around and testing out different uh, tools that you've been learning. I think that's really uh, critical. And you could, for example, if you want to make your balloons different sizes, you've got a bounding box here. Um, you can scale them. And if you want the scaling to re remain proportionate, you hold down your shift key. Um, the reason for doing that is if you don't hold down your shift key, you can get a distortion. The shift key constrains it to the same proportions. So what I'd like you to do now is just play around with these a little bit and make yourself a little bouquet of balloons maybe, like this up here, uh, and practice to um, reaffirm what we have just learned. In our next video in this series, we will be creating a heart, this beautiful Valentine heart here, and to do that, we will be learning uh, to average and join control points, and we'll be learning the all-important reflect tool. So I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Thank you for being with me.